Hey everybody, thank you for swinging by today for our webinar of the LH820ST. Um, uh, we will be getting going here in just a minute as we allow some more folks to trickle in. Alrighty, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, Bob Wudek is going to be walking us through the through the presentation, um, uh, and I hope that everyone gets a little bit of value out of this. Thank you, Robert. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Bob Wudek. I'm the senior director of business development here at BenQ, um, and I'd like to uh, thank you for joining our uh, webinar on the LH. 20 ST. Uh, this is a product that has been in the works for a long time and what we wanted to do as you can see on the screen is create the ultimate projector for small spaces uh, for golf simulation. So in order to do this we basically uh, started from a blank piece of paper and hired a national research firm to research what people are actually looking for and the challenges they face when they look at a golf simulator in their home. And uh, based off of the feedback we got from these uh, uh, people who either own golf sims or were in the market to buy golf sims, we created the LHA20. Um, it's not the perfect projector, but I think you'll see it addresses a lot of unmet needs in the market. So we'll walk through the features of that and then compare that to other projectors that uh, are out there on the market to see how it's different and then open it up for questions. So, uh, while BenQ has been in projectors for a long time, most of the people on the call have been into golf uh, and golf simulation far longer than we've been into uh, golf sim projectors. So we went and, and commissioned a national firm to ask uh, about a thousand golfers all over the country um, uh, to say, where do you want to put your golf simulator? What are you worried about? How do we can make it easy to install? And when you look at uh, putting a projector in your house for golf simulation, what are the top three things that you're looking for? So um, we got a lot of responses, a lot of data, and that basically created the uh, design for this particular projector. Um, so the first thing that we were a little bit surprised about when 
we ask people when they're looking for a golf sim or thinking about a golf sim, well, there's a lot of things they can think about, like what the right launch monitor is or what kind of swing analysis camera. The number one question that they were worried about the most was, where does the thing go in my house? Um, how much space is it, is it going to take? Where is it going to, to go? So space usage, how much space and where that space is, actually out outdid everything in terms of what questions they have. So for those of you who are selling uh, golf sims, uh, this may be uh, obvious to you, but uh, it, we were caught a little bit by surprise because maybe we're a little too close. So space usage, where does it go? Uh, so then we asked the question, well, where do you put it? Um, the, the most obvious question. And so you can see on the chart here that an entertainment or a media room was the most popular place, but there were a lot of other places that golf sims lived. Garages, for example, and a single garage stall is about 12 by 20, which works well for a lot of uh, impact screens that are 12 feet wide or 10 feet wide. Um, family rooms, basements, pool houses. So the other thing that we, when we saw the data, we realized that these are multi-purpose rooms. They're not dedicated rooms like we might have with a traditional home theater. Uh, and when we looked online and saw some of the installations, you can see people are very creative. So on the left, there's a garage, single stall, it's at the end. Uh, you can see the tires up in the upper right corner of that picture. Very creative use of, uh, of how, we, how they're putting these golf sims in. And uh, even for a large media room, like you see in the center, uh, it doesn't take up the whole media room. It takes up a corner. Basements. Uh, basements come in lots of sizes and shapes. You can see here, this is a wall with the foam blocks around it to protect the walls from uh, Aaron golf balls instead of enclosure. So there was a lot of variety, and we, we tried to create a projector that would fit in these applications in a smaller space uh, that would make it easy to work with, easy to uh, install, and, uh, uh, and needed to be different. And part of the reason that it needed to be different is that BenQ has been in the classroom projector business for decades. We were the number one uh, DLP classroom projector uh, for over 15 years, according to Future Source. So we know a lot about that. Um, and we know a lot about short throw lenses, but the, the most of our classroom projectors, and every other one, for example, is designed to to go onto a whiteboard, and whiteboards typically are between 75, 89, maybe you might get a 100-inch whiteboard, but most of them are sold in the 75 to 89-inch spaces. So the lenses are optimized for that, and they typically are lower resolution because they're lower cost, but they do have a short throw lens and they're very bright. But they fall short in, in some of the cases here. Then we look at the conference room projector, and these are typically either ceiling mounted or, or put on a table. And these are designed for 120 inch screens and they're typically higher resolution and they're very bright. But when you look at using a conference room projector for golf sim, you start losing some elements uh, that you could see if you have a home cinema projector where the higher resolution and the more realism that the home theater projectors have and the color accuracy so that when you look at uh, Pebble Beach or Augusta or Pinehurst for the US Open coming up, um, they look very, very realistic on the courses, but typically they're not very bright. A uh, home theater projector is about 1500 lumens to 2500 lumens. So we realized that all of these projectors could work, but they all have drawbacks. So how do we create a, a golf simulation projector? The first thing we realize is that in a garage or a media room or basement, uh, you have to be able to keep the golfer shadow off the screen. And uh, uh, that's the first and most obvious thing. But the second and less obvious thing is that many of these uh, installations have big, long enclosures. I'm not a very good golfer, and I have a tendency to uh, undercut the ball, and my ball likes to go straight up. So uh, uh, people, the, the enclosures keep my... Um, my drywall from being uh, uh, ventilated, so we speak. Um, the projector may be going into a garage where uh, in Texas it's hot and Phoenix it's hot. So how hot can it be in a garage without damaging the projector? These are 
These are questions that we had to address. Uh, the other aspect is when we talk about an 80 inch screen or even a 90 inch screen or a 100 inch screen, which would be considered large by a home theater, an impact screen of just 10 feet has twice the area of a traditional home theater projector. And it's in a well lit space. So you need a lot of brightness. And if you want a realistic image, you need a lot of color. So uh, that creates challenges for projectors because uh, home theater projectors are designed to be in a dark, dark room. Because the screens are also so large, you need a lot of pixels. So a classroom whiteboard at 75 inch might be able to be okay with wide XGA, which has only about a million pixels. But really for a good golf sim uh, experience, you need at least 2 million pixels on the screen. And so this was the, uh, this was how we took the data uh, that we got from um, from the survey and started building the projector that's specific for golf sim. So the first thing is easy setup. If you want to keep a pro uh, projector from creating a shadow, the first thing you need is a short throw projector. And uh, how that projector puts the image on the screen so that it reaches the top of the screen and the floor is an important element of uh, setting it up. And then the second thing that the projector buyers wanted in this survey was accurate color. Uh, while a lot of projectors can do bright and vibrant colors, the, the reality is that if you look on forums and you talk to people, they want an experience that is realistic. We've all played Wii Golf 10 or 15 years ago with bright greens, bright blues, and essentially colors that don't exist in real life. Most golf simulators uh, customers want realism. It was actually their second most uh, important criteria for a projector. The third is they didn't want to mess with it. They wanted the projector to work like a TV. We don't clean filters on our television sets. We don't replace lamps on our television sets. We just set it and forget it. And that of all of the attributes was uh, there. Higher resolution was number four and number fifth was brightness. Interestingly enough, all most golf simulator websites, when they talk about them, focus on, hey, I'm doing a 5,000 lumen projector or a 4,000 lumen projector or this amount of lumens. And it's actually one of the least important uh, uh, features of a projector when you ask a golf simulator buyer and, and have them choose from a menu. So can we make a projector that enables all of these things to be true in the right order? Well, the first is how easy is it to set up? So I pulled two images off of the web, uh, and these are from golf, different golf sim YouTubes and videos, and you can see the image on the left has a normal throw projector, and it's demonstrating a, a very nice launch monitor, but you can see the shadow on the left. The image on the right is uh, Rick Murphy, who's a PGA Hall of Fame teaching pro uh, in the Southeast, and he's got a very big screen and there's no shadows. So this projector is using a short throw lens. So step one, make sure that there's a short throw lens that works uh, for a DYI installer. Second and more complicated, is this thing called offset. So uh, this is something that most people don't think about. Even people who sell a lot of projectors maybe don't know what offset is, but offset is, is part of the menu scheme that we use when we create a projector. If we're creating a classroom projector, typically they don't have any offset because we're mounting them on the ceiling uh, we're mounting them in a way, the, the images at eye level for the students, and the ergonomics of, uh, of a classroom projector is that the bottom of the screen is typically about three to four feet above the ground. So you don't need a lot of offset, or any for that matter. Now the same point is when we design a conference room table, and you can see the image on the center here, um, that table might be two or three feet on, above the ground, but the bottom of the screen might be a foot or two feet higher. So you need to basically bend the lens so that it throws the image up there so you don't have to tilt it and do all kinds of weird things on the projector. It just sort of works. Uh, the, the most easiest to understand is in NASCAR when they go around a track because they're making left turns, the default position for the wheel is essentially a left-hand turn. So if you want to go straight, you have to turn the wheel to the right. 
This is the typical conference room projector with a high offset. But the problem with a high offset is that if you're using this with an enclosure, you have to be able to fill the floor and reach the top of the screen. So a high offset actually hurts us because then we have to put the screen, the projector below the enclosure and then tilt it up. So the uh, we experimented with a bunch of different uh, numbers, but we found that the 9% offset uh, enables uh, this projector to be ceiling mounted and avoid the top of the enclosure, still reach the bottom, and minimizes the keystone adjustments. So it's a small thing, but because the number one attribute that the customers were worried about is how easy it is it to mount, we put a lot of work in the offset element of this particular projector. And the next thing we did with short throw lenses, you can get expensive short throw lenses with lens shift, but you're typically spending more for a typical lens than you might buy for the entire projector. So instead of putting a really expensive optics in there, what we used is the technology that's inside the projector to create uh, effects and tools to digitally shrink the image. So if you're a DYI user, you can mount a little bit farther back to make sure you cover the entire screen area and then shrink it. Uh, you, you give up a little bit of pixels, but you still have 2 million pixels to work with. Same thing with digital shifting. If your projector is mounted too high, too low, to the left or to the right, you can move it a little bit without having to remount the projector. And then the favorite feature for most people is this, a technology called corner fit, where I can simply drag the image uh, from uh, that's over the corner and just drag it to the corner of the screen and the, the computer in the inside of the projector will actually do all of the pixel moving around so that the aspect ratio and the images look right. So, so this is a, a case of we put a lot of tools in here to where if the, uh, if the projector mount isn't in the perfect place, you can still have a perfect picture. Now, uh, we realize that a lot of projectors go into garages. A garage is a great place. Uh, you can as you saw in the earlier uh, picture, you know, you can be really creative with a garage. But uh, in Texas, in Arizona, in Florida, garage gets hot. So we basically defined that we had to build a projector that I can play if it's over 100 degrees in the garage. If it's, if it's 100 degrees in the garage, the reality is most of us aren't going to be playing in there. But uh, that was our, our, our criteria. If you're in Minnesota, uh, you might want to be playing as low as 32 degrees. And uh, so we designed the projector to be able to do this. And if you're in Florida, it will be humid and uh, it can handle up to 90% humidity. And you can leave it on the mount uh, from minus four to 140 degrees in your garage without worrying about damage to the projector. So this is something that's also relatively unique for projectors. We call it built garage tough. So, that's where it goes. Now, how does it look? So uh, color is something that is unique to projectors because when you buy a TV, you basically get Rec. 709 color. Almost every, every TV sold has the minimum color standard of Rec. 709. But in projectors, mm, they don't. And uh, so, when we look at uh, developing realism, we went and talked to the founders of GS Pro. This is a video that you can find on the BenQ website of the guys who design courses, uh, GS Pro, and the people who render these courses serve things. And we had a nice little um, a YouTube video talking about how they develop realism in these golf course software uh, platforms. And most every golf sim platform is going through engine changes where they're putting more and more realism using the latest gaming uh, engines out there to be able to create realistic sand traps, flowers, grass, et cetera, et cetera. So you can tell the difference between a bent grass green and a poa green. So on our side, to be able to create, we call it play like you're there color, we have to have two things. One, we have to have a good color gamut to be able to reach uh, the type of greens that a poa grass screen might have, or uh, the pink of an azalea if you're playing uh, Augusta National, or the, the blue of uh, Pebble Beach number seven, right? So we have to be able to reach there. And here, this projector has home theater color accuracy where we spec it to Rec. 709. 
If you look at a lot of different projectors, you'll notice that they use nice adjectives like bright, vibrant, other things like that, but they don't use specifications. BenQ, it's all about specifications. So 90% Rec. 7 and 9, here's the color chart on this. This is for color geeks, et cetera, meaning that we can cover almost all the colors uh, that is uh, in the best uh, HD TVs so that the green looks right. More importantly is the second bullet point, which is called Delta E. Delta E says, is the azalea the exact right pink? Is that sand tripe? Is that sand trap the exact right shade of uh, tan, right? And those are subtle uh, secondary colors that are actually quite difficult. Skin tones would be another uh, uh, key measurement here. And so we actually have a delta E uh, less than two, which is very close to what you would see in a cinema in terms of being able to get the secondary colors right. And we factory calibrate the white point, which is the basis for all the color, right out of the box. So while you can buy a classroom projector that will have quote unquote bright and vibrant color, it may not have the right point, it may not be able to do the secondary colors right, and it may not have the color gamut. This projector has all three. So let's talk about everything else. Those are the top two things. The third one was maintenance. So, uh, and laser projectors have an advantage over lamp projectors, it's obvious. You don't have to spend two or three hundred bucks buying replacement bulbs every time the projector gets dim, right? So the laser projector, and there are other laser projectors out there that have the same advantage, but one big difference is that this laser projector doesn't have a filter. And many people don't know that projectors still have filters. And just like vacuum cleaners still have bags, now we don't really, we've gone beyond that, but you know, for a long time you had bagless vacuum cleaners and ones that you had to buy paper bags for at the grocery store. Today, you still have projectors that require filters, even laser projectors, and they have to be washed. So how often do they clean or how often do you have to clean them? Well, this is uh, from Epson. And uh, this is a FAQ that says, okay, this is whenever it becomes clogged, some, some explanation on this. And then if you look at uh, another popular golf sim projector, this is the actual instruction on how to actually clean the filter. You have to soak it, rinse it, rinse it a few times. And if you don't, maybe your projector is not going to smell so well. Um, the other thing that uh, is maintenance issues that we've eliminated on this projector is this concept called convergence. If you buy a projector with three different color panels, those panels have to be perfectly aligned. And if they're not, you have to go in and fix it. And this is a menu off of one of the popular models today on how you fix it. Okay. So we said, well, that's, that's interesting. How often do you have to do that? So we didn't know, so we went and looked it up and said, how hard is this? And there's a nice YouTube video on how to do this. It takes, according to this guy, about five minutes to explain. And it has 11,000 views in just one year. So convergence, most people don't think about it. 11,000 people had to watch this video to figure out how to do it. Uh, we just decided to get rid of it. The l Number four was resolution and contrast. So DLP projectors made by BenQ historically have excellent contrast. And what we've done here is use the native 1080p chip that we use in the home theater space that, uh, that eliminate the screen door effect. So 90% of the pixel, that individual little pixel, is full of light. Uh, there's only a very small area outside of it. So you don't have this traditional screen door effect. And because it's a single chip, you don't have any red, blue, green lines around this where the images and the colors aren't coming together properly. So it's a very sharp image from day one through the entire life of the projector. So between the resolution and the contrast, we put 3,600 ANSI lumens on the screen and uh, you get 3,600 ANSI lumens and it's a nice, smooth, bright, realistic picture uh, even when you're in an environment where you're close to the screen uh, you're not being, you're not seeing any lines or any visual distractions. It looks very realistic. So how does it compare with the other short throw projectors? Well, the first thing is 
we picked a few and, and there may be more out here, but this is the first projector that's not designed as a classroom projector or not designed as a conference room projector. It's designed as a golf sim projector. So the installation, the realism, the maintenance free are really the core elements of what it's designed to do. The second thing we did is we had to change the lenses on this to be able to accommodate a large screen. So when you look at the specifications on some of the projectors out there, there are specific limitations. And we had specific limitations on our older projectors because if you're trying to make a lens that will go 12 feet or wider for an impact screen, it's more expensive than if I make a lens for uh, just nine feet wide. And, uh, and it's a lot more expensive. If you think about what you cost, if you have a digital SLR and what you pay for lenses for those, you, you're, you're very aware of how much a different lens can cost. So we put a more expensive lens on there and then we added the factory white point calibration, which adds a lot of work to the uh, production of it. But when you get it, it has perfect out of the box color. So from a street price standpoint, it's certainly not the cheapest short throw projector you can buy. But it has what it, the DYI installers, if you're selling a customer, if you're selling, if you're reseller and you're selling it to an end user who's going to mount it themselves, you can be confident that there's a lot of tools and a lot of ways that the, the customer can make small mistakes and be able to fix it when they put it up uh, on their own simulator and match it to their impact screen. And uh, particularly if it's a first time golf sim buyer, because most golf sim people that we talked to when they're looking at it knew virtually nothing about a projector. And because projectors are confusing and because golf sims are unique, uh, this is really the idea of designing a purpose-built golf sim short throw projector uh, for this. So here's a summary of we go back to the top five things that customers wanted with a uh, short throw projector. This has a 0.5 short throw lens. Uh, so uh, you can put the projector very close to the screen and with the digital shrink and Rec 709 color and the, the dust proof uh, technology, uh, certainly for the top three things, these are all very unique, particularly when you look at other projectors in the market. Same 1080p resolution that a lot of other projectors have and at 3600 lumens with a laser, it's very, very bright. And uh, because it's designed for color, it's not a case of where the lumen spec is one thing, but when you actually want to have a lot of color on the screen, it doesn't look nearly as bright. So this is a summary of how it stacks up. So the uh, summary here is that if you are selling a, uh, looking at a larger impact screen, you know, the 4K LK936 is certainly very in one of the most popular and most mentioned projectors on the golf sim forum. But it's also over four, you know, it's typically it's about $5,000 street price. This projector delivers a 1080p resolution, a very advanced short throw lens with a lot of the air correction and easy to mount stuff that we did with golf mode for under $2,000. Uh, and um, uh, yes, and uh, for small to medium spaces. And so with that, uh, that's the basic overall summary. We'll open it up for questions. And if you want to type in your question or if we have any chat or uh, you can unmute your phone. All right. Well, I, Robert, I think we're, uh, I don't think we have any questions. Uh, we'll just uh, open it up here for uh, a little bit longer, but uh, I think that uh, will, um, is everybody unmuted or? Uh... Yeah, yeah I, have a question? I, 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 just most people are self-muted. Um, uh, okay. But feel free to ask in chat or in questions. Um, uh, or you can 
shoot me an email af afterwards at robert.hill at binq.com. I'm uh, more than happy to help out with any of your golf sim needs. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody joining. Um, we thank you very much. And uh, as Robert indicated, uh, we do have these available to sell now. And uh, if you need any assistance, we'll be happy to help you. And thank you for attending the webinar.